Welcome back to the Student River Podcast. I am your host, Luke Stokes, and I am super excited about this episode, actually. Uh, This is something that we're going to talk about today that, uh, as a kids' activity center, is overlooked constantly, but is really a critical element in the long-term success of your business. We're going to be talking about branding today, and specifically, we're going to be talking about the uh, the three elements, the three components, if you will, to successful brands, and why some brands make it work and why some brands don't. Uh, branding is something that uh, is often overlooked or is often misunderstood, uh, misinterpreted. And we're going to dissect it a little bit further today to give you the foundation. This is going to be the foundational pieces. This is actually going to be a multi-part series. And I'm not sure whether it's going to be two or or three episodes. It'll for sure be two. And uh, really, it's going to depend on you know the rabbit trails I get down, go down, and where we find ourselves, how this kind of evolves as we go. Uh, because branding is not just a quick... 30-minute episode, and you've got it. This is an important, deep topic. And even at that, being multiple parts, I'm still only scratching the surface. So uh, I hope that you uh, have a pen because this is going to be one of those that you're going to want to take notes on. Um, this is going to be one of those that you, uh, you're going to have homework on. Uh, and so you need to be ready and in a headspace where you can not only study and listen, but take notes and take some action as well. And I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Thank you for joining us today. Branding. Um, as a side note, I know that you guys know by this point that I'm always working off of notes, but today uh, you're going to find me looking at the notes more than you're going to find me looking at the camera. Uh, and the reason is it this topic is a bit more nuanced than some of the others. Uh, and branding is something while you are always working on it, uh, every month, every quarter, every year, you're refining it, you're clarifying it, you're modifying it. Uh, it's not something you do every single day. And so consequently, uh, it takes a little bit more intentional uh, directive, direction, uh, as we as we dive into this, so I'm going to be looking at my notes uh, quite a bit, and that way I just make sure that I hit on those things that I want to hit on. So uh, if you're listening to this, you're not going to have any idea, but if you're watching it, uh, just know that's the why is uh, I'm I'm uh, being a bit more intentional with uh, with the way I'm approaching this today. So why does somebody choose one brand versus another? Why does somebody choose Mercedes versus BMW? Why does somebody choose Patagonia versus Columbia? Or you can see over here in in the corner, I've got some Rosignol skis. Now, those skis are from the 70s. I wouldn't recommend skiing them. Uh, And I'm a big skier. I come from the Pacific Northwest. Why would somebody choose Rosignol versus Solomon or any of the other brands out there? Duracell versus Energizer, McDonald's versus Burger King. The list goes on and on and on. And at knee jerk, meaning uh, at initial response, some of you might say, well, it's because, you know, Burger King tastes better than McDonald's. I'm just saying. I don't know if it does or not. Or because, you know, the 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 finishings, the appointments are nicer in Mercedes versus BMW. Not sure if that is or not. But I find all too often that people look at brands and think that it's the feature set that that makes the brand, that it's the the differences in the product. And while that is a factor, that is not branding. So, why does brand matter and what are these three things? Uh, we're going to we're going to really break this down into three topics. We're going to break this down into calling, meaning why do you exist as a company? Culture, meaning what's happening with your employees and with the staff and the environment and then communication. How is the calling and the culture communicated to not just your staff, but 
to your audience, to your community. Because if they don't understand why you do what you do, who you are, and why you're different, it doesn't matter, right? So you got to have all three. You got to have a reason for existing. You got to have the right culture that people want to be a part of, and you got to be able to communicate that effectively. So we're going to be kind of breaking some of those down. Some of them we're going to break down today. Some of them we're going to break down in next week's episode. Um, But that's kind of the roadmap there is we're going to be covering calling, culture, and communication. Why does brand matter? Brand matters because, to be honest, showing up just isn't good enough anymore. And I know that you guys are seeing this, um, regardless of whether you have a gymnastics gym, a swim school, a dance studio, uh, a martial arts dojo, um, whatever it might be, you can't just show up and exist. Now, if you're in a town of 1,500 people, then you can probably show up and exist because you're the only game in town. But if you're in an area where you have competition, just being there isn't enough. You're going to have to come up with differentiation. There's got to be a reason why somebody chooses you versus the guy across the street or across town or across the block, whatever that might be. There needs to be, there's more competition than ever, than ever. And unless you're doing something dramatically different, unique and have the ability to embody that in the staff and communicate that to your community you're just noise you're just another hey come drop your kids off at this activity they'll love it and that's just not enough to get it done your industry whether you want to admit it or not is being commoditized right i mean the last thing the last thing that you want to do is compete on price because that's a losing game. Someone will always be willing to undercut you. And so you never want to be in a position where your differentiator is, hey, well, we're $10 cheaper per month than the guys across town. That's not going to cut it. It's not. You're being commoditized and people are making decisions on price. And if that's the case, why are they making a decision on versus you versus the other? And it's not just a couple of bucks. And really this comes back to how you can create an environment where you can actually charge more and still get more business, right? I mean, that's, that's the golden goose there, right? I charge 15, 20, 30, 50% more than my competitor. And yet I still have a better business. I still have more people coming to me. Why does that happen? Why does that happen? It's not because they have a, a, a better coach. You know, oh, I got this coach that has all these titles and they're the ones leading the charge. Nope, that's a feature. That's not what the masses are looking at. Yeah, yeah, sure, maybe a couple people made a decision on that. But it's not what's driving the business. Nor will it drive the business going forward if you think the answer is to get a a specific coach or a specific this or that. It doesn't come down to feature set. I want you to, uh, to, to go watch something. There's an author out there by the name of uh, Simon Sinek. And he did a, a TED conference. He did a TED talk called uh, Start With Why. I want you to go watch that. Uh, it's short, right? I mean, none of the TED talks are more than 20 minutes long. Uh, but most of them are around 10. And he goes, dives into why somebody chooses, uh, you know, Apple products versus you know, Samsung products, you know, or so on and so forth. And, and what's happening at a psychological level. So go watch that. But here's what a brand is not right. So that's why brands matter. Okay. Brands matter because of those things, because you showing up's not good enough anymore. You need to be able to differentiate. Everything's being commoditized. You have more competition than ever. Right. I mean, these are things that, you know, and you're fighting with every single day. And it doesn't just come down to advertising. It doesn't just come down to feature set. It doesn't just come down to, well, I have this program or that coach or this piece of equipment or this function in the pool or it comes down to calling, culture, and communication. So what isn't a brand? A brand isn't a logo, okay? Just because you have a logo that you're excited about that doesn't mean that you have a brand. It's not a style guide. Well, we use this font and we use these colors and... I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying that's not a brand. Because you have a style guide and a logo, it's not enough. That's not what a brand is. 
And it's not necessarily either unique positioning. What I mean by that unique positioning can be, um, well, we've got a two-time uh, Olympian as our leader, as our head coach, as our instructor. Um, it's not, you know, uh, we've got air conditioning and nobody else does. It's not, well, our facility's bigger than everybody else's is. It's not because we have this class set and nobody else does. It's not any of those things. So it's not your unique positioning either. Okay. Those things are features and I'm not saying they're not important. I'm just saying they're not brand. That is not what's going to psychologically drive somebody to you versus your competition or a different activity. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so a brand is your unique perspective. Unique perspective is different than unique positioning. Unique positioning is features. Unique perspective is your view of the world and how your company fits into it. I'll talk more about that in a second. What else is brand? It's authority. It's the fact that you dominate mind, mind share. You dominate the the mind awareness of your community. Authority is not position though. Authority, again, I'm going to come back to this. Authority is not just, hey, I've got this super talented coach. I've got this super, you know, robust facility. It's, it's not authority in that capacity. It's authority, meaning the culture of your whole brand, of your whole business is that you guys lead at every stage. You have authority. You are the 500 pound gorilla. Okay. But that doesn't just get created by features. So you have a unique perspective, you have authority, you have an emotional connection. There needs to be an emotional connection with your community. Do you matter or would you be missed? Right? It's nice to be liked. It's better to be missed. Would your community be sad, broken, distraught if you guys moved to a different part of the town, if you guys went out of business, if you were no longer operating? If so, you're on the right path. And if not, listen up, right? Do you matter? Would you be missed? An emotional connection. And also brand is authenticity. Authentic to who you are and who you want to become, right? This is this is where the culture piece fits in. This is where what it is that you're creating is genuine and you, you staff according to that. You've heard me talk in previous episodes about staffing to culture before you staff to experience or skill sets. This is why, because if you don't, if you don't control the culture happening within your walls, it's going to happen by default. And so you have to hire for people, uh, hire people that fit with what you're trying to create. Okay. The authenticity, what you're wanting to come become who you are. Okay. So we're going to break all those things down. All right. So the three things that we're going to talk about today, um, I, I gave kind of the overarching three, which was culture calling and communication, but specifically today, today we're going to be talking about vision, vision, right? Vision. That's a combination of vision and mission. Today, we're going to be talking about vision. We're going to be talking about mission and we're going to be talking about values. Essentially, you must be able to answer the question, why do you exist? Why does your company exist? This is, uh, this is how the vision, the mission, and the values interact, okay? So this is what vision means. We believe this, okay? This is what we believe. And I'll I'm going to dive deep into each of these, but to get kind of broad stroke this, vision is we believe this. Mission is, which is why we must do this. And the values are, which is why we act like this. Okay, vision, we believe this. Mission, which is why we must do this. Values, which is why we act like this. So we're going to break this down into vision, mission, and values. All right, let's talk about building a brand. Vision. Vision is your core belief or point of view about the universe and your company's place in it. This is, this is brand perspective, right? This is, 
This is big. This is, this is idealistic, grand, aspirational. This is the big picture of it all. What do you believe about the universe and your company's position in it? This is about the why. This is about the understanding what your calling is and why your company, your brand deserves to exist in this chaotic, aggressive business landscape. This is big picture. This is not small. This is not, I want to uh, I- impact this or that uh, at, a, at, a, at a small level. I want to help a thousand kids. This is not, this is not quantifiable in that, in, that, in, that, uh, in that sense. This is, this is why you got started, right? So, you know, a few things that popped into my head as I was making some notes were, you know, this, this is, um, maybe you were, uh, a part of a, another brand before in a similar category. And that owner was just somebody that did business in a way that you thought was inappropriate and you didn't want to be a part of. And that spurred you on to create something new from a fresh perspective and in a different way, right? Maybe it's you have a foundational belief that kids need coaches, right? How many stories are there out there of somebody that has gone on to do great things that points back to an early day in childhood where a coach changed everything for them? Maybe that's it. Uh, Maybe it's a belief that there's just a lack of parenting taking place today, that the way people are choosing to parent their kids, you feel is deficient in some way. And you're going to step in as a coach to help facilitate that. Maybe your community has needs that need to be addressed. This is big though. This is aspirational. This is no time horizon, right? So this isn't, this isn't what you're going to accomplish in the next two, three, five years. This is the whole point of why you exist as a brand, okay? What you believe to be true about the universe and your position in it. This is going to be the filter in which which everything else comes into focus, okay? This is the piece that allows you to understand what your values need to be and what the mission needs to be and what the culture around the, uh, the business needs to be and how you communicate because it all leads back, it all points back to your vision and why you exist. This is the question and I've, I've said it a few different ways, but this is the question that you need to answer here. What do you fundamentally believe to be true about the universe and your place in it? Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm going to read you ours at Cascade Conversions. And uh, this is essentially just to put an example into what it is that we're talking about. Okay. Um, This isn't a pitch. This is just to reinforce what it is. So our vision here, we believe that the kids activity space is a vital contributor to healthy youth development by fighting childhood obesity, screen obsession, and behavioral dysfunction with discipline, goal setting, and emotional development. And that the current owners and coaches are not equipped to navigate today's aggressive business culture to effectively drive new student awareness and enrollments. That's what we believe. We believe that you guys are important that your brand is important, that your impact on your community is vital to the development of our youth and that you're not equipped to grow it the way you want to grow it. You're a coach. You're really good at it, but you're not good at putting new people into your business. And that's why we exist, right? So can you see how this is, this is the big picture of it. This is what I tr- believe to be true about this industry and our place in it. It's grand. There's no horizon on it. No time horizon on it. This is something that we will always be striving for. Okay? So that's vision. What I want you to do is pause. Go ahead and pause right now. Grab a pen. Jot down a few things. Like write down a few thoughts. 
What do you believe to be true about why you exist? What do you believe to be true about your community, about why you started, about your place in it, about your how you're going to solve this? Okay? You don't have to figure this whole out, this whole thing out. You may even want to bring in your team, right? And and do this by committee on some level. Like, what do we believe? Okay? But you you need to have some ideas going into that. So jot some ideas down. So go ahead and pause this, jot some ideas down, and then come back. If you're on your treadmill, then keep listening and just make sure that you do this afterwards, all right? So that's vision. Mission. Now, mission is... So remember, we started vision is we believe this. Mission is which is why we must do this. Okay, so now this is the action behind this. So your mission is measurable. It's achievable. Uh, It is a milestone but it is not the finish line. Okay, this is this is a moving target. This can always be adjusted, but this is based on what it is that you're going to go out and now accomplish because of the vision, the calling that you have created. This bridges the gap between who you are and who you want to be. This is a two to five year timeline is a good place to put it. Um, 10 feels too big because there's a lot can happen in 10 years. Even five sometimes feels too big. Uh, you know, two, three, four, five years, somewhere in there is good if you have a good handle on it, but this is what you want to accomplish. Okay. So there's, there's a few ways that you can go about determining what this needs to look like. Um, number one, looking forward. Okay. So as you look at where you are today, looking out, in two to three to five years, okay? So you're looking forward. What could we accomplish in the next five years if we put all our energy, attention, and resources towards achieving just one thing? I'm gonna say that again because I stumbled. What could we accomplish in five years if we put all our energy, attention, resources towards achieving just one thing? Okay. What is that? What could you go and do as it relates to your vision? That's your filter. As it relates to your vision, what could you go and accomplish in the next five years? If everybody on your team was moving with the same amount of energy, with the same voice towards the same goal in the same direction, with the same level of enthusiasm, what could you accomplish? Okay. So that's the looking forward method. There's also the looking back method. If we were to look back five years from today, what must we have accomplished to feel like the fa- the last five years were worth all the blood, sweat, and tears? Right? So that's now, that's now looking at it from almost a regret type perspective. Right? One is looking forward. This is what I hope to accomplish. One is looking back going, oh man, if we don't do this, we're in trouble. Okay, I'm going to read that again, again, because I stumbled. Sorry about that. If we were to look back five years from today, what must we have accomplished to feel like the last five years were worth all the blood, sweat, and tears? What are you going to go out there and do? You guys, just existing is not enough. Man, I'm getting worked up. I'm passionate about this. This is this is the difference between somebody that comes into your industry takes it by storm and creates a loyal, loving, enthusiastic, rabid fan base, super fans, and somebody that just has students. And there is a massive difference. And it's not logo. It's not style. It's not feature set. It's that you create a community that people crave, that they can't wait to get around. This is what brand is truly is. There's another way that you can create a mission and that's a vision inspired mission. Okay. So the other ones are, what are we hoping to get out there and go do? What are we looking back? Hope that we have done. And the vision inspired is because we believe blank to be true. We therefore must blank. Okay. It's just another way to look at it. Another lens to put this on that maybe it helps you think about it in a different way and, and identify what those pieces are that you want to accomplish. This is the question. 
Okay. This is the question that you're trying to answer. What are you determined to achieve? What are you determined to achieve? And again, this isn't a finish line. This is a milestone. This can be moved. This can be adjusted. In three to five years, hopefully you've accomplished that and you reset another mission. Or maybe something happens in your community and your mission needs to change. That's okay. It can. Your mission can change based on what needs to happen or, or what you're experiencing in your neighborhoods. But it's all going to dovetail with your vision. Your vision is the lens in which these things get created. All right, so... Again, where the rubber meets the mode road, where the rubber meets the mode, where the rubber meets the mode. No, the road, where the rubber meets the road. All right. So I told you what our vision is. Here's what our mission is. So why do we exist? We talked about that. We believe, okay, the mission, what we must do. Okay. So we must over the next three years, help 500 kid activity centers boost their student enrollments by 30%, resulting in over 325,000 kids positively impacted. That's a big must. That's a big must to think that we have that much leverage in driving new student enrollments in your community is very exciting because you guys aren't equipped to do it, right? We're looking back now to the vision. We believe that you guys are foundational in youth development for a few key reasons and that you're not equipped to go out there and drive people to your business to facilitate those reasons. Therefore, we must help you do this. And over the next three years, we're going to help 500 kid activity centers boost their student enrollments by 30%, resulting in over 325,000 kids positively impacted. Right? So you can see how the mission directly ties in with the vision. It's quantifiable, it's results based. It's what we must now go out and do. It's not the how, but it's the what. It's what we're gonna go out and accomplish. What are you determined to to achieve? What are you determined to achieve? Okay, mission, vision. We've got it, okay? Again, pause right now. Pause, grab a pen, jot some notes down while it's fresh. I'm sure while I thought, while I was talking through some of those things, some things were popping up in your head. If you're listening to this on your phone and you're on the treadmill, pause me, go to voice recorder, go to your voice notes on your phone, record your thoughts. What's up there right now? What's popping into your head? Oh man, if we could accomplish this, if we could go achieve that, if we could impact this many families, if we could get this many students in here, if we could... You know, if we could have this impact in the community, if, if I could build a business that could donate this much to this cause or whatever, right? What's, what's the what, <laughs> right? We, we got to establish the why, what's the what? Make some notes while it's fresh, while it's top of mind. All right, let's go on. Core values, right? So we've got, why do you exist? Vision, which is why you must do mission which is why we will behave. This is values. This is now where we start transitioning. This isn't complete transition, but this is where we start transitioning from calling vision, mission to culture. This is how we're going to act. This is the environment that we're going to create. This is how we're going to greet people when they walk through the doors. This is how we're going to answer the phone. This is how we're going to sign off on each email. This is how we're going to dress. This is how we're going to walk across the room. This is how we're going to coach. This is how we're going. This affects everything. This now is the basis on how you act. Okay. This is the, this is how we behave. Okay. Now there's a couple ways to start identifying these pieces. What you want to do is you want to start by looking at the inherent or natural traits of the leadership or founding team, because typically that's going to be your North star, not across the board, but that's going to be a great place to start a great filter to think about, uh, what it is that we're going to embody as a culture. What are we going to embody as a staff? How are we going to handle mistakes? How are we going to handle victories? How are we going to handle angry parents? How are we going to handle 
kids who are out of line? How are we going to handle our interaction with the janitor? This, this covers everything, okay? This is how we behave. And often you can look at the inherent or natural traits of the leadership or founding team. Not always, but it's a great place to start. This is your generally accepted behavior. Culture is created not just by what you say we're going to go out and do. Okay, We're going to go out and we're going to behave in this way. That's a great place to start. That needs to be established. But it's also going to be what you allow. <laughs> and this is the tricky one because a lot of you are not starting from scratch. You already have staff in place. You already have coaches in place. And now you have this idea of creating this culture, of creating this environment that feeds your community and creates super fans. And you've got staff that doesn't fit into this culture you're trying to create. Right? And so you have to then make a decision. What am I going to value? And these are not easy decisions. But as the leader, these are the decisions that you have chosen. You chose the game of ownership. So because you chose the game of ownership, this is the game you've chosen to play. You chose this, which also means that you're in charge of hiring. You're in charge of firing. You're in charge of culture. You're in charge of what gets allowed. And if there's staff on your team that isn't willing to embrace the culture that you're trying to create, you may need to let them go. Now, it starts by having a conversation with them, right? Sitting them down and taking ownership. You, as the owner. Listen, I know that uh, I haven't done everything I can to make you the best version of yourself. And I'm seeing that what I'm trying to create, you're fighting with in some way. And I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to help you feel like you're a part of this family. What else can I do? Right? It starts there. It starts with you taking ownership of the fact that you, maybe you changed some things on them and this isn't what they signed up for because you realize that the direction that you're going as an organization isn't the direction that you're wanting to go and you need to steer the ship and you need to change what you're doing. So you take ownership of that change by saying, how can I help you be a part of this community? I want you to be a part of this community. I value you, but you're not doing it and you're fighting me and we need to know why. Have that conversation. Is it tough? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? More than likely. But if you don't, you will never be able to adjust the culture. And the problem is, is that the rest of your staff that is excited about embracing it will have a hard time moving forward with somebody with a rotten apple in the box, with somebody that's not willing to be a part of the team. And that's going to have to be addressed. You're going to have to either, either help them move in that direction or after you've gone through the steps of helping them and they still are not willing to conform, it's the wrong word, embrace, because this isn't about conforming. This isn't about them changing. It's about them desiring to be a part of what you're of what you're creating. This isn't about you making them into something that they're not. It's about them seeing the opportunity of what they could become and what you're trying to create. Okay? And if they're not making that shift, then you're faced as an owner to make that shift. And you're going to have to then make that call. And getting rid of somebody, I and I can hear you right now. But Luke, you don't understand. They're my number one X, Y, or Z. They're my number one coach. They're my best front desk person. They're my best whatever. Yeah, but if if they're not feeding into the culture that you're creating, you're not going to move forward. I'm sorry. This is just the reality. This is the game that you've chosen to play but I don't know how to hire somebody else. I, this person's so good, I'll never find anybody else like them. Maybe. Likely not. Might take some energy. Okay? 
But it really comes down to generally accepted behavior. This is the culture. What do you allow? But here's the thing. Values aren't set in stone, right? You may evolve as an entrepreneur, as a coach, and there's new things, new awarenesses, new learnings that you acquire that change your perspective on things. Sorry, my screen just turned off here and it changed my lighting, didn't it? Let me fix that for us here. There we go. That's what happens when you don't touch uh, don't touch your mouse and your screen changes and all of a sudden your lighting's different. These aren't set in stone, okay? These are, they can shift with new learnings and new awarenesses, new understandings, community changes. They could shift based on the mission, right? If your mission changes, your values might change to accomplish that. Now, there's some that are going to be non-negotiable. It's just who we are. But there's some that are going to be mission dependent. What it is that you guys do to accomplish the mission. So it's okay if these evolve. It's okay if all of this evolves, if I'm being honest. The one that probably isn't going to, if you get it right, is your vision. If you get it right from the beginning, meaning this is truly why we exist, that one probably won't evolve too much. You might wordsmith it more to make it more eloquent, more clear, more understanding. You know, as I read mine, I realized that I can I can say it a little bit better, but it's still the meat of it's right, right? And so the vision, the why you exist probably isn't going to change all that much, but the mission certainly will, and the core values will to be in in connection with that, okay? Most values will not change, others may. Okay, so brainstorming a value, uh, some values. Here's how to kind of brainstorm things that are important. And I'm sure some of these, uh, some of them are going to, you know, be obvious to you. You're gonna clearly write them down. Um, but we're gonna categorize some of these. And some of these are core values, and some of them are just, the rules to play. Some of these are just like, hey, this is who you got to be. And we're going to we're going to kind of differentiate between some of these. So brainstorming some eval- some some values here for you guys. Uh identify traits of high performers. Who in your organization is performing at a high level? Who in who in your organization if they're running the front desk, everything just seems to be smooth. The people seem to be happier. The staff seems to get along well with them. You know, who is it that is the coach that just seems to have the best retention? They retain the most students from session to session, month to month, year to year, right? Uh, Maybe it's, you know, one of your executives, if you're a large organization or one of your managers, who are the high performers and what are their traits? Conversely, what are the traits of your low performers? Right, Those that aren't getting them done, that aren't getting it done well, that there's always conflict, that there always is an angry parent at, that there's always something going on, there's always drama. If, you're, if your organization's filled with drama, the chances are some of this stuff isn't clear. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to all of a sudden have a drama-free organization. We're human beings and we love drama. And that's going to be a part of this equation. But there should be a threshold in there. If all it is is drama, then some of this stuff isn't clear. So what are the traits of the low performers? And then filter through these traits. Filter through. What's categorize them? You know, these are, you know, productivity traits. These are personality traits. These are... um, social skills. These are emotional intelligence. These are, right? What are these different traits? What are these different characteristics of not just who you, um, who you guys are, but also who you want to become. Now you have to be careful with that. Uh, and I'll, and and I'm going to transition to that right now because there's different types of values. Okay. Um, you have core values. Okay. These are what we're actually talking about. These are the values that you guys as an organization embody. 
These are these are different than some some other. Um, well, it'll I'll explain more as I dive into even some of what ours are to make this make sense. Um, it's going to help you. I, I kind of see the differences. Okay, but core values are what we're driving towards. Um, aspirational. So aspirational values you got to be careful with because aspirational can be uh, can lack authenticity, and if um, if you're not careful, you'll be seen as fake. And so you have to be careful with aspirational. So, you know, these can be things like, you know, um, I'll give you one of mine. We don't take life too seriously. That's one of our core values. We don't take life too seriously. That's a bit of an aspirational value for me as the leader of the organization. Why? Because I have a tendency to take life too seriously. I don't laugh as much as I should. I am a little too serious a lot of the time. And I know that about myself. Now I don't want our organization to reflect that. So that would be one of those characteristics that's aspirational. But as you communicate this to your team, you need to make sure that you identify those character traits, those those core values that are aspirational. Otherwise, they're going to look at you and not buy in. Right? If I went to my team and said, hey, team, we're going to make sure that our core values, one of them is we don't take ourselves too seriously. And they're going to look at me and go, okay, that's like the, you know, pot calling the kettle black. You're, you're the most serious individual here at the organization. But if I come to them and say, Hey guys, here's something that I'm wanting us to move towards. And I realize that I'm not the best example of this, but I'm going to continue to work on it. And I want us to embody this. We can't be too serious around here. We need to have fun. We need to joke. There is a time for seriousness, but there's a time for play and levity. And I want to make sure that we trend in not taking life too serious, right? So there's a difference between core values. This is something that I believe strongly in and is foundational to who I've become. And then there's aspirational. This is those things that we want to evolve into, but you got to be honest about what's what, especially in your communication, not just to your team, but to your community. Otherwise, there's going to be a breakdown in trust and you won't create loyalty because they see right through you. Okay. So you just have to make sure that you identify it. There's also accidental traits. There's accidental values. Maybe the leader is incredibly sarcastic. Okay. Uh, maybe the leader is incredibly sarcastic and as a consequence, the unintended consequence of that is that the managers tend to be a little sarcastic, which means the coaches are a little sarcastic, which means that the, you know, the students receive that moms receive that at the front desk and it can create a culture that's not necessarily endearing. Sarcasm can be funny. Like I I have a tendency to be sarcastic. Now it's not something that I am all the time, but it's not attractive to everybody. And if you're not careful, you're going to create a culture. You're going to have values that are unspoken. These accidental values that are going to create a culture that you're not excited about, but more importantly, you may not even notice it. You're just going to see the result of it, of people not embracing it of your community not driving to you in the numbers that you want to have happen because there's no level that it's lacking a level of authenticity and connection and emotional connection through sarcasm. So that's just an example, right? Of an accidental trait that you have to be aware of. There may be things that you guys are doing that you need to stamp out that you have to recognize and go, Ooh, didn't mean for that one to happen. We need to start addressing this. Okay. Uh, another one may be try, right? I had a, a business coach say, no one in my organization is allowed. My organization or house is allowed to say try. Yeah, I'll try and get that done. Hey, can we have this done by Tuesday? Yeah, I'll try and get that done by Tuesday. You know, this could permeate all the way through, right? If the leader allows someone to have a try type mentality, then the coaches allow the kids to have a try type mentality and it doesn't produce results. But you may not have meant to do that. You just find yourself there. So recognizing it. And then as the leader, 
coming back to what you allow, right? The generally accepted behavior coming back to what you allow. This is going to be the piece where you have to recognize it and then make changes so that you shift things. As people say, try, you go, oh, I know that we did that a lot in the past. We're not going to say that word anymore. Redo that sentence. And you make them resend the sentence. So instead of saying, yeah, I'll try and get that done by, by Wednesday, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I'll see if that's a, I'll see if that's a possibility. Right? And, and it could still mean the same thing because you don't know if it's actually possible to get it done by Wednesday. But it's a different way to frame it. Okay? So accidental values, you got to be careful of those as well. And then there's permission to play values. These are not core values. An example of this might be honesty. We value honesty here. Well, yeah, no kidding. Hopefully you do. What do you value lying? Okay. So these, you know, these are not, um, the, the, the permission to play values are basic human goodness traits. This is being kind being honest, loving others. These are permission to play values. We value not stealing here. Well, I hope so, right? So the, this, these, these permission to play values, you have to be careful of. Those are not unique things that create culture. Those are things that create good human beings, right? Those are basic things that have to be valid for you to hire them, okay? So um, there's core values, there's aspirational values, there's accidental values, and there's permission to play values. The question here that we're trying to answer is how must we behave? All right. So again, where the rubber meets the road, we talked about why do we exist? Okay. We believe this. We talked about what we must do. So because we believe this, we must do this. This is the what. And now we're talking about the values, how we behave, okay? Which is why we behave like this. And here's, here's our values. Subject to change, right? This can evolve. We can add. We can remove. We can modify based on the mission. Most of these won't change. Some of them can change, okay? Execution trumps perfection. I'm a big believer in making sure that if you're going to go out to accomplish something, it's more important to execute and get it started and get it moving than making sure that it's perfect. Okay. This is what we believe, right? You don't have to embody these execution trumps perfection. Know the why. Okay. Now this can be why we are doing a specific ad campaign. This can be why we responded to an email in a certain way. This can be why we exist. This can be why I'm doing a podcast, but it also is if you make a mistake, knowing why it happened so that you don't do it again, so that you can learn from it. Okay. So know the why we over deliver. How many companies out there barely deliver, under deliver and fulfill on your expectations? Fulfilling on your expectations is just permission to play. Over-delivering. Looking for opportunities to surprise and delight. Now, this is something that, this is one of those aspirational ones for us. Now, our true intent here is to over-deliver. Do we do it 100% of the time? Nope. We try to, but we drop the ball sometimes. It's going to happen, okay? But our goal is to over-deliver. This is why this is how we will behave. We are going to be accessible, approachable, and authentic. There are way too many organizations that, you know, have a, a mask that they wear. Way too many people that have a mask that we wear. And accessible, approachable, and authentic are three uniquely different pieces. Accessible means you have access. Listen, if you guys, if you're one of my clients and you want to call me up directly, to have a, have a conversation, we'll book that meeting. You have access directly to the top. Okay. But we're approachable as well, which means that you feel comfortable making that request. And when you have that access, I don't make you feel weird about it. Okay. So that's the approachable piece. You feel like you can go there. One is knowing that that's a possibility. Another is feeling comfortable 
in actually taking advantage of that possibility. And then authentic means that we, it, none of it feels forced. It, it, you know, when we have that conversation for that requested meeting, it's not with a, you know, a stretchy smile, meaning uh, a fake. Eh, I'm so glad I get to meet with you today. What do you have going on? Right? It's not fake. It's genuine. It's, hey, what do you need? What can I do for you? I'm here to serve you. Right? It's authentic. It's accessible. It's approachable. It's authentic. We continually pursue growth opportunities. Okay, this is another one of our core values. Nothing is ever stagnant. The world is always changing. Whether that's marketing, whether that's human awareness, personal development, coaching level skills, right? It's always changing. And we're always pursuing the next level of our evolution, of our awareness. Always looking to be better. We continually pursue growth opportunities so that we put the best product forward, the best version of ourselves forward day in, day out. We take ownership, okay? We take ownership when we're asked to do something. We take ownership. It will get done. We take ownership when we tell somebody that something's going to happen. Hey, we're going to make this change. We're going to make this adjustment. It takes place. But we also take ownership when we mess up. Cause we're going to mess up. We're human. And when that happens, we'll say, yep, you're right. My fault. I own that. That was our error. No, come then. And then we're going to know the why, right? Coming back to one of those other values so that we know why it happens so that we can move forward, but we're going to take ownership. We know another one of these values. We know that the only moment that matters is this one right here. This is the only moment we have. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. This is it. This is the only moment that matters. This is the only opportunity that you have to love on someone. This is the only opportunity that you have to be kind, to say the right words, to provide forgiveness, to provide grace, to live with gratitude, which is the next one. We live with gratitude. We are so blessed as a nation as a, uh, I'm often humbled by the opportunities that we're afforded. We live with a lot of privilege. We live in a great country, regardless of all of the drama that's going on, regardless of who our leader is, we live in a pretty amazing spot. And the fact that we have an opportunity to not just live here, but thrive here and to run a business and to impact people and to have influence. That's pretty freaking cool. So we live with gratitude every single day, knowing that there would be people that would swap with our position at any moment. We live with gratitude. Thank you for this moment. And then the uh, two more. One is we don't take ourselves too seriously, right? We talked about that one already. That is the, uh, you know, more most aspirational one of these, uh, at least from me personally. Some some of my team do this great, um, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Levity is important. People want to smile. They want to feel good. And the last one is we do the right thing. We do the right thing. That doesn't just mean that we do the right thing when we're dealing with clients. Yes, we do the right thing when we're dealing with clients. And we do the right thing even if it's going to cost us money and affect the bottom line. But we do the right thing with employees, with our staff. We do the right thing with our families and with our kids. We do the right thing with our neighbors and our, uh, our loved ones. We do the right thing. That is something that we believe here, that we will do the right thing. So those are our core values. Maybe some of those strike a chord with you. Maybe some of them don't, and that's fine. I'm not trying to say these should be your core values. I'm trying to give you ideas and pieces that, that put all these blocks together. This is the culture that we're creating. 
that when you deal with us as a company, this is what you can expect. We're going to execute. We're going to understand why we're getting done. You're going to be surprised and delighted, meaning we're going to over-deliver. We're going to be accessible. We're going to be approachable. We're going to be authentic. We're going to always be looking for growth opportunities, so we're always going to be evolving and doing things better and doing things more efficiently. We're going to take ownership when we do make mistakes. We're going to make sure that we take ownership when we tell you something's going to get done. It's going to get done. We're going to know that this moment, even all those things being uh, the case, this moment is the only moment that we have. So we're going to love on you, and we're going to share with you, and we're going to uh, provide grace uh, with each other because this is the only moment that we truly have. We're going to live with gratitude. We're going to be thankful every single day that we have this. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We're going to laugh. We're going to joke. We're going to have fun and we're going to do the right thing. So that's what matters to us as a company. What are yours? What are your core values? What are those traits of your high performers? What are those traits of your low performers? Who are your leaders? What are their, their traits? Sort them out by category. How do they fit into this big picture? How does behaving in this way serve the mission? Right? And how does that all fit in to the vision? How does that all fit in to the why we exist? So these all build on each other. Okay? This... This is the true essence of a brand. This is why Chick-fil-A outsells KFC and Chick-fil-A isn't even open on Sundays. Because of the culture. People, it's not because their chicken's that much better. Yes, they have delicious chicken. (laughs) You got to have a good product. You can't have all these pieces and have a lousy product. That's not going to work. You still have to have a good product and good features, but that's not a brand. You still have to have good chicken, but that's good chicken does not a brand make. (laughs) That should be a quote. Good chicken does not a brand make. But what makes them sell more chicken is the way they treat you when you walk through the doors. You ask anybody to do anything there and they respond with my pleasure, right? If you've ever been there, you've asked them, hey, um, could I could I get some extra sauce? Yeah, you bet. Here you go. And you say, thank you very much. 100% of the time they say, my pleasure. Right? It's a part of their culture. It's a part of their DNA. It's a part of their core values being how they treat you. It's the experience that you have when you walk through there. And that is why they sell more chicken than everybody else. Okay? So we talked about calling. We started moving towards culture. We started moving towards, you know, the how you're going to behave and what you're going to have happen. The three questions that we need to ask, we need to be able to answer is why do you exist? What must we do? And how do we behave? This is what brand is all about. And this is why people will crave to be around you. This is why people will look to you guys as who they want to be around and you'll create super fans because you make them feel good and you have a positive environment and so on and so forth. Okay. This is just the beginning though. We are only scratching the surface of this. There's not anything that I've said here isn't incredibly unique. This is all, you know, taken from books and from mentors and coaches and stuff like that. This information is readily out there. It's This isn't revolutionary. I might be the first one that you've heard it from, and maybe you've heard this a bunch and you just haven't done it. Now it's time to go do it. If you truly want to move forward, it's time to go do it. This is just the beginning of this process. The next episode, we're going to now talk about how we, how we take this and move it forward. Okay, so we have these pieces. It's not a, You got to commit it to paper, but it's not enough to just commit it to paper. Now, how do we establish the authority in the community? How do we establish the voice in which this gets communicated? We're going to be talking about all of that in the episodes to come. So thank you for listening to us today, us, me. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you have found some some information here that's going to allow you to reflect and get honest with yourself about why you exist, what you're going to accomplish 
and how you're going to behave as an, as an organization. I appreciate you so much. I'm so thankful that you are here and listening to us and doing what you can. If you're listening to this, if you've reached this point, then you know. You know that it's time to make some changes. You know. And the great thing is, you're pursuing those opportunities. You're doing what you can to move your organization forward. And I, I got goosebumps right now. I'm really excited about that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in your team and in your community. Man, I'm getting choked up. Because I truly believe that you will impact your community in a way that nobody else can. Go do it right. We'll see you next week. Thank you.